All right, so it's time to cover multiplication and division in assembly. And we really need it to do a lot of standard type operations like moving integers to strings and indexing into arrays. So let's get into it. So the first command here we're going to look at is called mol, which is to multiply. So far, we've been able to do a lot of our commands with any registers that we want. But MUL or multiply is special. We need to have one operand in REX. For example, if we move to REX a value of two, and then we move, let's say, to RDX the value of three, then all we're going to do is put mole RDX. And what this is going to do is multiply RDX by RAX. RAX is an implicit operand for the multiply command. So if we populate these two, we see two is in RAX, three is in RDX, and we click step two times three is six. Result goes in RAX. So when we're using mole, we have to have one of our values in RAX. It's built in. If we try to multiply, let's say RBX by RDX, let's move a value to RBX first, like one. Then we're going to have an assembler error here. We have too many operands, too many arguments. So multiply takes one argument and the other operand is implicitly RAX all the time. And mole is only for unsigned values. So if you know your numbers are going to be positive, then just put one of them in RAX, the other one in any other register, and then we can multiply. Now we could do IMOL. So IMOL will be able to handle negative numbers. And this one is a little bit more flexible. We could do the same thing. Let's move to REX, let's say the value of negative two, and then move, let's say, to RDX, the value of, let's say, three. And if we do IMOL RDX, then same thing happens here. It's just a signed version. So if we step, we see a very large looking number here in REX. That's because it's negative. We move three to RDX. We step and we see the result here is a very, very long REX. And you might notice that RDX also has a value put into it. And that's because since we're dealing with 64 bit values, if we multiply two large 64 bit values together, we're going to end up with a very, very, very huge number. So what these systems are designed to do is actually to handle a 128 bit number. And all it does is it splits it in half. It puts the upper end in RDX and the lower end in REX. So these two are actually connected. This is the top of that number, the top of negative six, because negative two times three is negative six. So this is actually negative six in a 128 bit twos complement version. The value of negative six, it's all these hex digits put on top of all these hex digits, and it's just in twos complement. So don't worry about it too, too much. We'll just look at the bottom 64 bits, right, which is any sort of value that we're likely to have in any of the products that we're doing. But just know that if you do multiply two huge numbers together, then that result, even though it may overflow 64 bits, the overflow itself is going to be an RDX. We can also, if we reset, let's move racks like three, and let's move RDX, let's say two, because IMOL, of course, since it's signed, it also works with positive numbers. So if we IMOL RDX, then we'll see here. Well, let me get rid of this first one, I guess. We put three and two, and we end up with six, right? So no difference here. Only negative numbers will create weird looking values, but they are just negative. They just look a little bit strange. So in this version, we can also use our own operands. So RBX, let's say we moved the value of, let's say, four to RBX then we can actually multiply RDX and RBX. And that's because IMOL allows us to give it two arguments. We don't have that error that we had before. So even though we have three in RAX, we're only choosing to multiply our two in RDX and our four in RBX. So if we step, then we see that there's eight into RDX with the same format as usual. This is going to take the result multiplied by this value. So multiply RDX by RBX. So those are the basics of multiplication. Very, very simple. If you want, just use IMOL all the time. It really depends on what program we're going to be dealing with, but it's totally fine to just use this as sort of a standard version of multiplication. But you do have that unsigned version if, if we need it later on. So now let's look at division. The command is div. And we also have to do a little bit of setup, just like what we have to do with, with MOL, where we put something in REX specifically. This is what we want to be divided into. So let's say we want to divide 6 by 3. We'd move that value that we want to divide, which is six into RAX. And then in any other register, let's say RBX, we can move the value of let's say three to divide six by three. But before we can divide, what we need to do is clear RDX. And that's because much like multiply, since we can have really huge numbers when we're dealing with these kinds of operations, RDX is actually counted as part of the value. It's the upper half, uh, just like it was with with IMOL for the result is for the, the source dividend. In this case, we just have a value of six. So RDX, all those 64 upper bits should be zeroed. This is an unsigned operation. So if we put in divide RBX here, 
then it's going to naturally use REX, or I should say the RDX REX combined 128 bit value and divide RBX into it. So if we compile this, then we clear RDX to make sure that there's not a huge number above our six. We put six in REX, we put three in RBX, and then we divide and we see the quotient is two because six divided by three is two. What if we wanted to divide it by something that it can't be divided by evenly? If we put four here, we have six in REX, we have four in RBX, and we're gonna see we did divide four into six one time, and there's a two remainder here. You see the RDX gets that two remainder. The divide command is really a division and sort of a modulo, if, if you know that from other languages, built into one. Our four went into six one time, but there's two remainder. So we have access to the quotient and the remainder all at once. So very convenient here. And to show you what will happen if we did have a value in RDX, then it's going to treat it as a huge, huge number because we have a one in that we could say the 65th bit or really, really should be bit 64 since we started at zero. So RDX is contributing to that dividend value. So if we divide this, it's going to be a huge, huge number here. We got a very, very strange number. We need to make sure to clear RDX. RDX is counted as part of the value that we're dividing into. So really important to clear that out unless you're using these huge numbers. But for now, we're not going to do that. We just have simple numbers. So we're going to divide whatever is in REX by whatever is in that other uh, argument, the other operand that we choose. And let's just always zero out RDX in this case when we're using the div command. So if we do a larger number, let's see, let's say 25 divided by, let's say seven should be what three with a remainder of four. So we have 19 in hex, which is 25. We have seven in RBX, and then we divide and we have three because three times seven is 21 plus four is 25. So we have our entire operation here. We have three as our quotient and four as our remainder. So this is how divide works. Just remember, please to clear that RDX. And then for sign values, it's IDIV, much like we had IMOL. And in this case, we can just use signed values, but it works pretty much the same uh, with one small change. Let's say we move to REX the value of seven, and let's say we move to, let's say RSI the value of four. So we're expecting to have one with a remainder of three, right? Seven divided by four is one and there's three remainder. So in this case, we can still clear RDX, but there's a slight uh, difference here. Let's put IDIV RSI. So if we populate seven, and four here, and we divide, then we see one times four is four, plus three, right, that remainder is in RDX, is equal to seven. But what if you wanted to do anything with a negative number? Let's say we had the value of negative seven divided by four. Well, in this case, two's complement, which is a type of method that we use for negative numbers, RDX won't necessarily be zero here. So there's a very convenient way when we're dealing with signed values to sort of set up RDX the way that it should be by extending values. And that command is called CQO. And all it does is it converts our quad words, which are 64 bits, to octo words, which are 128 bits. If we step through here, we see REX is a very huge looking number, and that's because it's negative. When we execute this instruction, CQTO, then we see the RDX has now been filled, all the bits have been turned on. And it's just saying that this is a part of, of this number. So it's extending all of these Fs to make this value negative. Again, don't worry about this too much. We're just making sure that RDX, since it's included as part of that dividend value, to properly make sure that RDX doesn't change our value. So with this command here, we're saying, hey, my value is negative seven. Do whatever you have to do to RDX to make sure that my dividend is actually negative seven, not some weird number because some weird bits are turned on or some weird hex digits are present in RDX. So a very important command here when we're doing signed division. So if we compile this, this is actually negative one here. Uh, so we have a negative one. And then our remainder should be negative three, four goes into negative seven, negative one times, and the remainder is negative three. So again, it looks strange, but we're not going to be dealing with negative numbers very soon. So that's multiplication and division. For now, we could just use a simple form. Whenever we need these, I'll go over them again. So our simple form is just to move to REX a value, move to any other register, another value, and mole RBX will implicitly use REX. And we have an F here, which is a value of 15. Three times five is 15. And then to divide, we need to make sure that we clear RDX. We can move our dividend, let's say 15, which should be F, right? 15 to REX. Let's move to another, let's say RCX, the value of seven. And then if we divide 
and use RCX as the argument. It's going to look at RAX and divide that by the register that we have here. So if we compile this and run, then we'll see our multiplication goes through. And then now we're division seven in RCX. We have 15 in RAX and then we divide. Two times seven is 14 plus one is 15. And by the way, since we're using RDX as part of that dividend, we can't use it. It's sort of an easy mistake to make. For example, if we moved RDX at the value of seven, and then we divided by RDX. I'm actually not sure what error we're going to get here, but it's going to definitely be something bad. And it ends up being here a, a floating point exception. So can't use RDX as a uh, divider in these divide operations. We need to use a different register because RDX is by default part of that, that source here. And one more thing, it's worth noting that we can use immediate values only with the IMOL command out of all of these. For example, if we moved, let's say to RBX, the value of three. And then let's say that we wanted to just IMOL RBX by some static number like two, then this should work. So if we have the value of three in RBX, and then we're going to just multiply it by two sort of manually here, and we get six. So that's a convenient way for us to be able to do uh, kind of like simple multiplication with immediate values. Uh, this is the only version that will work. Mole will not work. In this case, we have to move to rack, let's say the value of five. Mole cannot deal with immediate values. So we get an error here. For mole to work, we'd have to move that to, to some other register, and then we can mole RBX, and it will apply it to RAX. And we get an A, which is 10. Uh, I hope this is helpful. We're going to need this as we start printing out these values in decimal, converting numbers to strings so that we can print them out. For example, we could print an actual 10 and not have to see this in hex. And we'll also use it in some upcoming videos when we sort of do some like pointer arithmetic and use arrays and traversing arrays and uh, indexing into arrays. So uh, as always, thanks very much for joining me. I hope this is helpful and I will see you soon.